Hello, everyone. Welcome to This Is In, uh, AARP Indiana's program where we touch base with uh, what is happening across the state in, uh, in our communities, the good work that's being done and AARP's involvement with them. Today, we're continuing our conversation uh, around community challenge grants. We've talked a little bit about this is one of our favorite times of year because we're getting the opportunity to uh, give out some grants to some great organizations that are doing great work in their community. And it's uh, the Community Challenge, Challenge Grant Program. Now, this is a nationwide program that AARP does. More than 3.4 million in quick action grants were distributed to 260 organizations across all 50 states, Washington, D.C., Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. Uh, AARP Indiana is incredibly proud to have five grantees right here in our state. One who, one grantee who we will be speaking with here shortly. Um, the the Community Challenge Grant Program is part of AARP's Livable Communities Initiative, which supports the efforts of cities, towns, neighborhoods, and rural areas to become great places to live for people of all ages. Since 2017, AARP Indiana has awarded 14 grants with over $225,000 going to these uh, programs to, uh, for nonprofit organizations and government entities across the state. This year, there's been some additional funding support from Toyota Motor North America, and that program is helping to increase investment in projects that improve mobility innovation and transportation options, which leads us to our guest today from Blue River Services. He is the CEO, Dan Lau. Dan, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's uh, uh, Blue River Services was uh, one of Indiana's five grantees and received a grant of $25,000, which is actually the largest grant recipient this year. So uh, kudos to you on that. And uh, once again, a plug for Toyota uh, Motor North America because they helped to make that happen. So Dan, um, as the CEO of Blue River Services, I guess just, just tell us a little bit about uh, this grant and what it's going to do for, uh, for your organization, for your programming. Okay, uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you to AARP and uh, to Toyota for um, providing this funding for this grant. Uh, one thing that is definite is that it's going to make a huge difference in Southern Indiana and in uh, Floyd County in particular. And uh, Blue River Services operates a, a five county um, a public, rural public transportation system. And as you can imagine, the rural counties uh, in Indiana and probably throughout the country, that's a big transportation is a big challenge uh, to people in the rural areas. Uh, a lot of counties don't have rural public transportation. Um, and um, Blue River has been operating in four counties for about 20 years. And now with the assistance of AARP Indiana and Toyota, we're going to be able to expand into an additional county, Floyd County. And um, of course, what we're trying to do is address the needs of the citizens, particularly uh, seniors and uh, people with disabilities and help them to become more independent. Transportation, of course, is one of the barriers to independence in many areas. And with this funding, we're going to be able to make a big dent in that barrier and assist literally thousands of people um, in the future. And so how important, I guess, how important is it to have, uh, I guess, organizations like AARP or, or a large company like Toyota invest in kind of and provide that those kind of re resources for uh, Blue River? It's extremely important. We, we do our best to access um, rural public transportation funds uh, that involve some state and some federal dollars, but it requires local match. And that local match uh, translates into um, multiples of, of what the local match is. So it's, it's critical that we receive the support of organizations like AARP and Toyota in order to uh, um, make the transportation system uh, all it could potentially be. Uh, it's, it's 
critical. That's that's the best word to uh, describe it. And uh, because of the support, uh, we will be able to expand this rural public transportation system in Floyd County and impact thousands of lives over time. Now, is the um, the expansion in Floyd County, is this was this something that was always like a wanted to do it, just never had the opportunity, or is it like we got to do whatever we can to get in there because the, there's the obviously the demand for those kind of services. I guess what what made you want to even like expand into Floyd County? Well, expanding into Floyd County has always been on the radar uh, of our public transportation system, but we were uh, never able to quite uh, get over the hump with the matching funds and, uh, um, you know, County government is also supportive of this idea. Uh, and we have had some people in county government who have been sold on the idea of needing public, rural public transportation in Floyd County. Of course, Floyd County is uh, partly an urban area and um, the majority of the county, however, is, is rural. So we were serving many of the surrounding counties with rural public transportation. But in Floyd County, you had access to uh, some urban public transportation. But if you lived in the rural areas, you did not have access. And of course, we all know that uh, whether it's people who, uh, whether it's seniors or people with disabilities or, or others, that transportation can be, be a huge barrier to independence. And whether it's getting to doctor appointments, to uh, grocery stores, to, you know, you name it, um, you know, people are, I guess, more dependent if there isn't rural public transportation. So with this system, uh, it's actually a demand response. The majority is demand response and people will call needing a specific uh, destination uh, um, and they will call us, we'll come and pick them up at their house and we will take them to that destination. And you can imagine what an, an increase in independence for people that is. Yeah, I mean, something that we always say here around AARP is we want people to have the ability to age in place. Everybody, as they get older, they wanna be able to stay in their homes and, and in their communities for as long as possible. And transportation, as you said, it, it provides or lack of transportation is, is an incredible barrier for them to overcome and prevents a lot of folks from being able to do what they want to do and that's stay in their homes as long as possible. So um, it, it's fantastic that it's the opportunity to maybe to expand that service to more folks and give them more opportunity to just uh, continue to be, stay in their homes and communities where they want to be and still be able to get out there and do the things that they need to do and they want to do. So I think that's uh, that's fantastic. Um, now, I know that a, transportation is just one part of of what you do. So I wanted to give you the opportunity to talk a little bit about what else uh, Blue River Serv Services does. Uh, and I, I'll kind of just, you know, bring up your guys' uh, website because like y y you go over there and there's a whole lot of lot of programs um, that <laughs> kind of drop down there when you look on your website. So just, just tell me a little bit more about what is it that, uh, you know, Blue River Services does for, for the folks in Southern Indiana? Sure. Um, Blue River Services actually um, was formed in 1959 by six families who had uh, children with developmental disabilities that were not receiving um, special education or educational services through the public schools. And over the years, of course, um, the public schools started doing special education and Blue River's focus, focus um, changed to serving children birth to five and adults 18 and over in vocational and habilitation services as well as residential. So today um, we have a wide variety of services that um, meet the needs of people with developmental disabilities and other disabilities, as well as seniors. Um, one of the newest areas, and I say new, it's been over 15 years that we've been working in affordable housing, um, 
is that we have numerous multifamily affordable housing complexes around Southern Indiana, okay. making for uh, uh, quality affordable housing for people that are uh, low to moderate income. And quite a few of those facilities actually serve seniors and people with disabilities because, you know, quite frankly, um, in the nonprofit business and in uh, uh, working with governments, there are different planning groups that get together. There are um, trying to better the lives of people in the local community and things that always come up are transportation and affordable housing mm -hmm. and employment, childcare uh, and different things that are impediments to in independence. So we have tried to meet the needs of the general public as well as people with disabilities and particularly seniors in a lot of these programs and developments. Um, we do have Blue River Industries, which is a, a vocational training and employment for people with disabilities. We have habilitation services for those same groups. We have, uh, as I was mentioning, housing. We have numerous housing complexes. Um, and these also work in conjunction with the uh, transportation department. And we will have uh, routes and um, uh, demand response that actually goes to these housing complexes and assist people in transportation needs who might otherwise uh, that be an impediment to their mobility. Um, we have a uh, first steps program, which is early intervention for birth to three year old children who are born with special needs uh, or at risk of, of delays. And that's in 26 different counties in Southern Indiana. Um, we have seven group homes for adults and frankly, many of those adults have been living in those group homes for a number of years and um, are also uh, aging adults. Um, we have in-home services throughout the counties in, um, where we go into the home and work with people so that they can age in place uh, and not have to leave their home. Uh, we have the WIC program in four counties. Uh, you know, serving nutritional needs of, of families and uh, uh, with birth to three-year-old children also. Um, in other words, I guess, and I'm, I'm sure I'm leaving out a few things, but uh, we have a, a wide variety of, of programs and services, all are trying to improve, improve the quality of life and the independence of people in Southern Indiana. And uh, this transportation grant will be another strong way that we will be uh, serving independence needs. Well, I, I, I got to say that you guys are doing a lot, a lot of good work uh, down there for a, a, a lot of folks. And so I appreciate uh, the work you and your team are doing down there. I appreciate you uh, kind of putting uh, putting it out there for this grant so that you guys could also expand that transportation side of things. And I just want to also just thank you again for taking the, uh, taking the time today to chat with me and to talk about the, the grant and your organization. Uh, hopefully we look forward uh, to seeing that, that expansion to see how it goes and see how, how it's impacting people in Floyd County. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure we'll, we'll follow up at another time to check in to see how things are going uh, and continue this conversation. But just wanted to say thanks again for taking the time uh, and congratulations uh, to you and your team uh, on your grant. And uh, we will, like I said, we will look to, look to follow up to check in to see how things are going. Uh, and we appreciate the work that you're doing. And, and with that, we will. Uh, that's it for this, this edition of This Is In uh, with uh, AARP Indiana. And we look forward to talking more about some of our community challenge grant winners, as well as th great things that are happening in our communities around the state. So we will uh, see you next time. Hey.